Right, just down by the mill. Don't forget the Huguenots were around this area. And they were kicked out from France in 16 something or other. And they came to use the water to power their wheels to make their silk and everything. I've seen this a lot fuller and a lot fiercer, this um, waterfall here. Coming down from the hills, you'd think it would run out of water, wouldn't you? It never seems to. There must be like a whole reservoir of water in, in the hill somewhere. Because it goes out to sea, yes, it, you never see the same bit of water again. And uh, it's amazing. So I've just come through the gate, leaving my lovely Holford behind now. Beautiful, beautiful walk I've had. It's observed some teenage schoolboys doing measurements of the stream flow and other stuff. Well controlled, busy little bees. And uh, that was nice to see that children, big children in that case. Um, when we were kids. But I never came with a secondary school here, which I always thought was a shame, really, that we didn't come here and do further studying out here. I would have loved it. But we came with the primary school on nature trails and things. Just really an introduction to the hills. And collecting leaves and bones and... Yeah, I'll never forget, but of course all those infant books and all my stuff that I did as a child. Because I used to do a lot of writing. And uh, some of my stuff was put on a board, you know, what I wrote about. It was all... I tell you, I felt quite sad once. I remember we were collecting for bonfire. And I came across a really nice piece of work I'd done. And I'd given it to my mum. And my mum put it in to be burnt. I don't have room for that. I thought, oh, that was my pride and joy, that piece of work I'd done. But, you know, careful writing and... Yeah, those infant stuff and junior school stuff, I haven't got any of it. Unless Margaret managed to save anything. Um, I haven't got... I've kept some of my senior school stuff, of course. But I've got rid of a lot of stuff. I, oh god, the stuff I, I should. We didn't do scanning in those days, you see. So nothing was really saved. Uh, I have saved a lot of my OU work and my nursing stuff. And of course, my master's degree dissertation is in the Royal College of Nursing Library, in the the Steinbeck collection. Um, it's saved forever up in London. I gave copies to the hospital but I don't know, probably threw them out. You know, who knows. And I've kept all the work I did when I was training to be a teacher and a nurse. I've still got my big folder as a teacher. Uh, you know, when I had to prepare lessons to teach different classes. I've got all that. And when I trained to be a nurse, I've got all my essays that I did. Um, one of, some of my work, my tutor put in the nursing mirror. It was called Help Me Make It Through the Night. It was my first experience on a night shift ever. Ward 8, I think it was, in Musgrove Park. And my eyes were really opened when I started to do nursing about the body. I mean, I, I saw loads of operations. I saw post-mortems. Oh, you know, I did a lot. I learned a lot. It was very valuable, actually, what I did. Um, I, I've never seen it as a waste. I've really enjoyed... I, I love learning. And... Um, yeah, so it helped me make it through the night. I've still got it. I'm going to scan it. It's been, I'm waiting to scan it to go on my tree. Because I'm sharing stuff like that. But it, it was published in the Daily Mirror by my tutor. She thought it was excellent. 
it was a student nurse on night shift caring for a one of the things I was doing is helping to look after a dying woman. And um, it was quite a horrible death, to be quite honest. I, I was shocked um, by the way this woman was deteriorating. Um, it was something I'd never really thought about exactly, because I think she had a ruptured abdomen or something. Anyway, the contents always find their way out, and not always through the places you think. So, I'm not going to go into any more detail, but I just remember how shocked I was, thinking how the body just can do stuff like that. And, um, yeah, it was... Uh, and of course it was also not just about her, it was other things I did, like trying to keep awake. How did the nurses do it? <laughs> it was like really hard. They were big wards, big old wards, nightingale wards. And we used to have three chairs in the middle of the ward. And when it was your break, you were allowed to rest your eyes for as long as it, you know, not all night. Just You had a period where you could rest your eyes. And, um, but you had to sit in the middle of the ward, and if you were needed, you had to get up right away. I just remember how tired, I mean, I wasn't a youngster when I trained to be a nurse either. I'd finished teaching, and I'd gone, I always wanted to go back to nursing, because I'd been a nursing cadet when I was 16. I didn't want to go on with it then, because it was in a mental hospital at the time. I didn't fancy mental health, after I'd spent experiences in watching mental health care put me off but later on I thought god I wish I had kept a nursing really um, but teaching came in handy um, when I was looking after kids uh, no when I had my children because it fitted in with the summer holidays anyway there's somebody sat on the lawn and I'm going to go and find a seat there's one in the sun well, there's one there. I might go in the sand to start with. I'll come back to that. Right, I thought it was recording, but I wasn't. Look at the height of that tree. Look. Now I'm just going to quickly go down onto the little bridge over the the stream before I go on to Hol or Foxton. I had to, had a little debate with myself whether I should do it. There's somebody coming. Right, hold on. So I let you up. Hi. All right. Yeah, all good. Thank you. That's all right. I wish I was doing the down bit. Well, I'll be. I'm, I'm only. I'm only popping here for a second. I haven't done it for a while. Then I'm going up. Uh, but I've. I've walked from Bit Muller, and I've got to get back there. <laughs> it's a whole day trip. Enjoying it, it's great. Yes, yeah, so you can see quite a lot from here, and there will be ruin. There's ruins um, in through there. I can see a bit of a building. The Huguenots were here. This is, I think there's some history all about this, so we just go across the little bridge. Yeah, there's probably a building in there somewhere hidden. And there's the rip, that's the stream that I followed down from, all the way down the coombe. And it met other streams. And we're on this lovely bridge, following it. I'm sure I used to see ruins somewhere, but I can't remember where now. You should be able to pick up the water sound here. I'm not going, I'm not going up there though, but uh, somewhere here there were ruins. Look, 
Yeah, it's good that we're doing this because um, right, carrying on a bit. We went up and on the bridge over the stream, which runs out to sea, and it comes off the hill. Uh, in a minute, we're coming up to a a carved seat. I think it might be a plaque as well. I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like it's been done up. She looks not quite new that one on her head. Um, we're on the lovely path to Al Foxton Estate Park and House, but we're only passing through. Um, I probably won't stop and engage because there isn't time. When I, if I had the van, I would have spent a lot more time um, visiting and exploring and talking to people more. Might be the same seat. I've sat somewhere here with Georgia. There's more than one seat. There's this one. And there's one further up. And this field here used to be a refuge for deer. There were, there were people that were anti-deer hunting and they bought some land and um, or they rented it and they used to let the deer run here. I think the deer probably still get in here. Look at that lovely scene. Of course I've walked all the coast over there. Over Kelv and all that all over there. And uh, cross fields and that I've done it I've, I've done a lot especially when I had Alberta because I could park Alberta and I could go off for hours and never had to worry this is a, a recurring theme in a lot of my stuff now the restrictions um, they don't have this problem in London because bus, buses in London run all the time but out here out here There's no bus at all that goes along the Bridgewater Road. No, there used to be. Stopped it. I'll put the Kuiper pack on everything.